Mm-hmm. And I genuinely think that that exact dystopian society described in The Giver is exactly what they think that Marxism is. Yes. And that's not the case. No. This, that's not socialism. Mm, that's right. dystopia. Like when we talk about, <laughs> yeah, when we talk about market socialism, that's a system where there would not be any assigned mm-hmm. jobs, where it would still be people choosing their jobs. It's just that you wouldn't be coerced by the, th- the threat of death by poverty. It's the Casey and Zoe thing. So there are three parts, but I believe they're all covered in this series. Oh, yes! It's it's one of their, like, g- g- cartoony ones. Nice. Yes! Um, Alright, so we'll just watch the whole series. Yeah, indeed. Oh, everywhere Marxism has been tried. Great. Already this is off So this base. is all of them combined? Yeah, I believe so. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because here's mm. to each according to his ability. And okay. here's... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, this is all of them. Okay! Cool. Here we go. Propaganda busters activate. <laughs> what does Prager you? Autobots roll out. Think about Marxism. Why does anyone still care about Marxism? Karl Marx has been dead for well over a century. Everywhere Marxism has been tried, it has left death and destruction in its wake. In fact, Pause. nothing in the last thousand years... <laughs> And this is, I mean, it sounds like already he's conflating Marxism and socialism. Yes. Um, well, and also not all practices of communism are Marxist. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, Hi, Fox. Hey, what's up, Fox? Cutie. Um, yeah, no. So so right out of the gate, to say, like, everywhere Marxism has been tried. Already they're lying. Mar- like, you, like... Correct me if I'm wrong, Zoe, but like, uh, 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 well, first of all, Marxism is not an economic system. <laughs> it's uh, it's a, would it be fair to call it primarily a moral philosophy or a social philosophy? Like, a social, would, philosophy, social philosophy, first and foremost, okay. yes. Like a socioeconomic, <laughs> like it's socioeconomic. There, it, like there right. is economics in Marxism, but it's not... It's not like saying communism. No, it's like more... the communist manifest manifesto speaks to Marxist, um, you know, ideals. Mm-hmm. But um, Marxism, in and of itself, yeah, it's a historical analysis. Historical exactly. analysis. There you yeah. go. That's a good. Yeah. Yeah, you can't say like this is how <clears throat> communism goes. Marx never held a job. Okay. Mm-hmm. Just FYI, just learned. Okay. Mm-hmm comes close to the amount of tyranny, terror, and mass murder brought about by Marxist regimes. Yet regimes. Marxism lives. It That's may the present thing. There's no Marxist regime. Like, it's not... Marxism hasn't been tried in these nations. Socialism's been tried. Communism, forms of it. And in many cases, it wasn't even that. I mean, I, I've... I've uh, you know... Uh, uh, more and more, it seems to me, like, something like the USSR was not even really proper like they didn't even really follow the teachings of marx almost all it was communist kind of societies thing. don't yeah um or <clears throat> communist societies don't and yeah. dale's correct it's it's similar to how like plato's yes. you know plato's republic <clears throat> is a thought experiment yes like that's that's marxism mm-hmm. it's the same thing it's like it's it's not a blueprint on how things should be mm-hmm. it's more of like a this is an, a sort of an idealistic way of describing mm-hmm what things could be or, or or I think philosophically they should be. Yeah. It's um, a it's a narrative too. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Uh, 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 a way to look at the look at history. Totally. Today is postmodernism, mm-hmm. multiculturalism, feminism, environmentalism, or critical race theory. That's not Marxism. Marxism may present None itself today as feminism. Or multiculturalism. You know if there's many cultures in a place that's <laughs> Marxism? This is. Did you know that postmodernism? Does anyone know oh, what postmodernism I, fucking means? Yeah, postmodernism runs directly opposite to Marxism. Literally, postmodernism and Marxism do not. Because Marxism is all about like here is a narrative interpretation of history and socioeconomics, and postmodernism is all about there is no narrative to anything. Yes, and it's all. It's like devoid chaos. of meaning. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's um, what postmodern art is too. Yes. 
so so yeah anyone if you hear anyone say these these darn postmodern neo marxists you can immediately write them off as someone who doesn't know how to think properly well dale says he doesn't <laughs> think that's wrong marxism okay. feminism is a thing so let's let's make sure we're speaking to the right thing here because i i believe that feminism as we understand it is not inherently linked to marxism is what the point i'm trying to make mm -hmm. but marxism feminism i want to know about so let's see <laughs> what have I done? Stop. Okay. Okay. Nice. Marxism feminism <clears throat> nope. is a philosophical variant of feminism that incorporates and extends Marxist theory. Marxist feminism analyzes the ways in which women are exploited through capitalism mm. and the individual ownership of private property. Mm -hmm. According to Marxist feminists, women liber well, women's liberation can only be achieved by dismantling the capitalist systems in which they contend much of women's labor is uh, uncompensated. Marxist feminists extend traditional Marxist anal analysis by applying it to unpaid domestic labor and mm -hmm. sex relations. Okay. So, I mean, this is... Well, yeah, and I guess it's a matter of, like, wording. Like, the fact that, like... It, I, to me, the, the wording of, like, presents itself as made it sound like it may try, like, they may try to disguise it as these other things. Right. That's exactly the way that it's presented. You know? Uh, 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 but, yeah. No, but this is good to if know. He, uh, if he had said, um, perhaps it would have been clearer if he had said... Um, Marxism is found in theories. Uh, there, there are branches of Marxism found in theories such as ba 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 ba. Yeah. Not Marxism mm. is presenting itself as ba 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 ba. Right. Because there are tons of feminists who know nothing about Marxism. Absolutely. There are tons of environmentalists who know nothing about Marxism. Um, uh, just because someone is anti-capitalist doesn't mean that they're necessarily pro-Marxist. Yeah. And so, of all of these, probably the one that is the most like. Uh, 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 the most and uh, like bonkers non sequitur is postmodernism. Yes, that has like nothing to do with Marxism. Yes, but there probably there are there are ways that Marxism uh, uh, can be applied as a lens to multiculturalism, feminism, environmentalism, and critical race theory, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, tying it into how capitalism exploits all those things. Well, yeah, and I think that that the mm -hmm. the, the big fault here made by PragerU is that they think all sorts of anti-capitalism are Marx is Marxism. Mm -hmm. If you right. do not believe capitalism is working, you are therefore a Marxist, right. which is not true. Indeed. Um and that is I think their biggest rhetorical failure here. And yeah, totally, a list of leftist scare words. Theory. And yeah, post I like postmodernism is super fascinating. Mm -hmm. But it's still Marxism. Yeah, so, see. there yeah. must be good reasons why it has endured, even flourished in the face of unremitting failure. And not flourish. Say what you will about Marx the economist. Unremitting economics. failure. So, of he course, was... he's ignoring, like, you know, policies that exist in capitalist countries today that are socialistically derived, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, 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 uh. So, yeah, it's just quite absolutist and misleading to say just, like, no, no socialism has worked anywhere ever. It's, yeah is not like true. go to any nordic country please yeah was a master psychologist he recognized that there are many people in every society who are motivated by envy and resentment mark speaks directly to them he tells them that the responsibility for the misery in their lives belongs to the capitalist system if we can just get rid of that he promises we can eliminate poverty inequality exploitation class conflict war and alienation now, not I, I'm not sure about this, but I don't think Marx said he wanted to end inequality. I believe he also wrote quite a bit about how, um, you know, the distinction between inequality and inequity. Let's see. Mm -mm -mm. Marxists theorize that inequality and poverty are functional components of the capital mode of production. Capitalism necessarily produces inegalitarian social structures. Inequality is mm -hmm. transferred from one generation to another through the environment of services and opportunities which surrounds each individual, which is totally well. Yeah, and I think true. it's also about like depending on what point in, Mar in the timeline you look at Marx. Like he he questioned himself a lot as mm -hmm. he went along, mm -hmm. and a lot of his mm -hmm. later analysis challenged his earlier analysis. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I believe, and like again, I'm not, but I believe I read about him digging in deeper and looking at the questions of equality in specific. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We'll see you in an hour, Fox. All right, Fox. Have fun. Paul, 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 Paul. 
seen a little bit. In a place of equality and based on his historical materialism, Marx advocated for the abolition of class society as it presently exists in the form of capitalism. That's that's important, though, as it mm -hmm. presently exists. Right. I think hierarchical structures will would still exist. Yeah. I, 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 mm -hmm. I definitely don't want to speak to anything incorrectly as I'm critiquing Prager mm -hmm. analysis of Marxism, but mm -hmm. there are some pretty obvious like uh, rhetorical and moral failings here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I think I think certainly modern socialists are very open to hierarchical structures in the micro, just not in the macro. Right. You know, like like if you're building an office building, like there should be a foreman. <laughs> you know, like like leadership is 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 cool. Yeah. Uh, 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 and when it's applied in a you know an egalitarian manner. Um, some people are better suited to be leaders, yeah. especially depending on the context and what is the goal of, uh, of the, uh, the operation going on. And Dale says Marxism has been updated continuously hmm. since, uh, yeah. since his death. But yes. that's the thing. So it says to view Marxism as uh, what the man wrote 200 years ago as bad faith. That's how they view a lot of the Bible, too. Mm -hmm. Or the fucking <clears throat> Second Amendment yeah. was written 200 years ago. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's just like, this is what they do. Mm. This is like this this original bullshit that that the the right loves to play with. But they wrote this in in seventeen hundred. <laughs> and it's funny how it's like, true. They throw so much credit. Like I see so much right wing criticism of Marx, and like I don't think I've ever seen a right winger criticize like some of the the like anti Semitic stuff Marx said. <laughs> like there's stuff. There's really legitimate stuff that you could criticize Marx about, mm -hmm. and all I see right wingers complain about is like he wanted everyone to have a fair shot. Fuck him. Yeah. <laughs> no, I think that there there are really awesome mm -mm. Um, uh, socioeconomic uh, recommendations in yeah. um, Marx's theory. And he was yeah, I mean, a brilliant guy for his time, and and incredibly insightful, and and pointed out and distinguished things at least on a on a a scale where many people heard him, you know, obviously for all we know, there were, you know, many people who, who, who made similar observations, but just never got the same level of attention. Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, certainly uh, 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 seems like a groundbreaking thinker from this perspective. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Dale, yeah. It's like anti-Semitism was like the flavor of the day, even more so than it is now. Um, well, yeah. The anti-women, anti-people of color, anti-Semitism uh, yeah. were huge in all political and philosophical theories yeah. leading up to, like, I don't know, this year. And I almost <laughs> never, like, almost every time I, if someone is criticizing Marx, I never hear that brought up. <laughs> yeah. Like, Bad uh, list if you're looking to start a revolution. <clears throat> but there's more. Oh, Marxism there? assures us that this socialist utopia is close at hand available to all, not in some distant future or in the next life, but here and now. I mean, it is. All we have to do is overcome one little obstacle, human nature. Oh, Marx there expressed it is. his deepest views on this subject in his economic and philosophical manuscripts of 1844. So let's talk a little bit about human nature. Yeah, worthy of discussion. Um, it is one of the most widely debated topics in philosophy. Mm -hmm. What is human nature? What are humans naturally inclined to do? How are we supposed to feel? Um, what is nature versus nurture in our society? Um, and how do we identify all that when we are all subject to nurture? Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it's it's... It's such a ridiculous, uninformed mm -hmm. blanket statement to say that Marxism requires human nature to be um, d dissolved in mm -hmm. order to succeed. Right. That's not the case. Um, uh, perhaps Marxism requires a complete spiritual revolution in which people actually unlearn their conditioning mm -hmm. um, in order to conceptualize the <laughs> possibility of Marxism happening. Um, yeah. Or not even Marxism, but socialism. Um, um, that's true. Uh, but to say that this is like inherent human nature is to completely overlook the thoughts of philosophers up until truly today. So, so, yeah. um, a ridiculous <clears throat> thing that the right loves to do is pretend that they have the answers to, uh, big philosophical questions and it drives me wild. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, 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 uh. the only way we could really know how much our current 
perceived nature is influenced by capitalism and many other social systems is if we could peer through a crystal ball into an alternate universe, an alternate earth where there is not capitalism. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's tough to know what our, 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 cause our nature, our quote unquote nature could be so many different things depending mm -hmm. on the uh, cultural context and uh, economic system and everything else. Um, I tend to think that humans' inclination is collaboration. Mm -hmm. that, that That's what, literally what separated us uh, evolutionarily from the other animals. It's why we became the dominant species on Earth. It was not our, our competitive nature did not get us here. Mm -hmm. Quite the opposite. Mm -hmm. Our collaborative nature uh, um, is what allowed civilization to become a thing. Uh, I also often bring up the anecdote about... Um, uh, you know, where a, a Lord of the Flies type situation happened in real life with a boat full of young schoolboys and they were uh, lost on a remote island and for, for months. And then when they were finally rescued, um, the, the rescuers did not discover, you know, an island full of kids with war paint on their face, wearing pigskins on their heads and stabbing each other. They found a bunch of uh, kids hanging out, having a good time, working together, taking care of each other. Even one of the kids broke his leg, and they they set the bone, and they gave him a, a you know a, a, a splint. splint. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 so I think there that's just one example, and I think there are many real world world examples to show that it, that on the rare occasion when humans get to live outside of our uh, 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 cutthroat capitalist culture, that they behave pretty differently. Um, you know, and obviously a, a big part of this because they were young, like they hadn't been totally capitalistically conditioned yet. Whereas I think if you put like 30 uh, uh, middle aged stockbrokers on a remote island and then came back three months later, you'd find one guy covered with blood. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, um, uh, 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 you know, so so I think, uh, yeah, there's that. And, and even if we accept the premise that humans are super competitive, that we need we need that kind of, and I think to a certain extent we do. We enjoy competition, of course, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, I think it's perfectly possible that if, you know, if, if our, our society was more fair and equitable and healthy and functional, we'd be perfectly satisfied with the competition of like playing a basketball game mm -hmm. or competing uh, 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 for the chance to contribute. You yeah. know, this is very much how things function in, in the way Star Trek portrays uh, their future world is that people are competitive but they're not competing for like who will have the right to eat a sandwich right. they're competing for who gets to be the captain of a starship yeah um which is obviously a far more healthy thing for a uh, society to compete over than sandwich access right well i think like the thing <clears throat> that separates us most specifically is is language I mm -hmm. think that that, like, people yes. say it's the ability to reason, yeah. and I don't necessarily think we can prove that we are the only animals that reason. Um, I do think that there is pretty uh, succinct and, and clear proof that we are the um, only animals with language. Mm -hmm. um, and, language and that language allows... In, informs our reality. Yeah, and mm -hmm. language allows a kind of reasoning mm -hmm. that you cannot perform mm -hmm. without language. Mm -hmm. I don't think, like, dogs can't, like, ponder. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. There's no way for me to right. know. Right, can they um, but our ability to uh, create our reality through language, it does seem to be exclusive to humans. And um, it's pretty well thought that language actually, um, it comes before reality. So our reality is seen through language rather than language as a way to describe reality. Well, and like Helen Keller said, she had, if I recall correctly, she had no memories before she learned language. Um, and I think it's probably very similar to how it is for like a dog or a cat is that everything for them is probably very abstract mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and language allows us to distinguish things and build narratives. That's, so, that's yeah. the biggest thing. Well, yeah. And if you look at if you <clears> look <throat> at that being the human nature is the ability to to uh, interpret our world through language or, or interpret our, or, or, or uh, narrativize our world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, um, or the other way around either way. Sure. Um, then Deep yes, Marxism is totally possible to do tomorrow. It's yeah. just that everyone needs to accept that their reality is conditioned mm -hmm. and that the way that we speak and the way that we interact with one another and the languages that we have um, all influence what reality looks like to us. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually the language came first, so. 
Yeah. It's just like all of these things are 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 totally valid philosophical um, counterpoints, and they never ever speak to them. It's as if they have the correct answer, and that's why this shit is propaganda because you cannot have the correct answer to a philosophical question <laughs> yeah. that's been debated since like ten thousand BC. Like you just can't yeah. do that. Yeah. And people take this shit as truth, and it's not, mm -hmm. you know? Yep. They can be summed up in one phrase. The enemy of being is having. In other mm -hmm. words, the desire to own things makes you a bad person. No. No. no that's not what that <laughs> sentence means. <laughs> no. no. It doesn't make mm -mm. you a bad person. Good try. <laughs> the, the institution is bad, not the person. Prager, you, you put words in everyone's mouth again. Not to blame. The blame belongs to capitalism. The most common interpretation of Marx's philosophy suggests that he opposed capitalism because it creates an unjust world of inequality, yes. exploitation, and class yes. conflict. Yes. Marxism, according to this view, is all about equalizing income and social status. This yeah, is it's true, a little reductive. reductive, but it doesn't go far enough. <laughs> Marx saw the accumulation of material wealth as dehumanizing. Yeah. Uh -huh. The more money and material possessions one acquires, the more estranged one is from his true humanity. Sure. And what was that? In the philosopher's socialist paradise, one gets to eat, drink, and go to the theater free of charge and without having to earn a living. Best of all, you get to do it without the guilt of being a moocher. All you have to do is enjoy yourself. Or, as Marx put it, you can do one thing today and another tomorrow. Hunt in the morning, fish in- As Marx said that evil sentence, you can do one thing today and another it's tomorrow. It's getting kind of goofy. It's getting goofy. Like, he's still, mm. like, he was correct for a little bit. Like yeah. he was he was correctly describing what was going on as if it was like a bad thing. Right. He's like, you can like have a fun life. Yeah. And uh, that's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> but but also not entirely correct. Yeah. Uh, very reductive. I'm trying to let him get to yeah, like, yeah. I think I'm gonna he's let gonna him make keep a talking point. for a bit. Let's okay, see, let's, let's see. see. In the afternoon and rear cattle in the evening. Yes, rear cattle in the evening. That's how in touch Marx was with reality. But who cleans out the sewers? does the dirty jobs that keep a society functioning. Ironically, in the evil capitalist society, the sewer cleaner freely chooses to take on his job. In the socialist paradise, coercion is almost always required. No. And of course, and this is one of the biggest lies of, of capitalist uh, proponents, <laughs> that it's like not co coercive. Living under capitalism is entirely coercive. You're threatened, oh, yeah. you're threatened with death by poverty. That's why the sewer worker under capitalism chose to work in the sewer because he had to work somewhere to live. And that was the job he found his way to. And right? there's a psychological difference between feeling <clears throat> like you're contributing to the functioning society in which you have a good life in. Yeah. Um, I think that was a correctly structured sentence. Um, but in which you have a good life, period. Um, but, but, um, uh, uh. It requires less coercion to do something like a dirty job mm -hmm. when um, your hours doing the dirty job aren't insane. Yeah. When mm -hmm. um, there are safety measures in place that probably wouldn't be there when people are trying to cut costs and make better profits. Um, and and it, yeah. go ahead. Well, I was going to say, and if there was a culture where all workers were respected and seen as valuable, like if the sewer worker could, could after their sewer work, go to the bar and then, like, you know, someone hears they're a sewer worker and they're like, you clean the sewer? You're That's awesome. Okay, thank you for helping. I, I use the sewer every day with my poo-poo. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much for keeping the sewers clean. You're awesome. Yeah. I build the bridges. And then they'd be like, oh, you build it. You're cool. Like, yeah, yeah. That it would be completely different. If you could brag about having built a bridge that people use every day. Yeah. That's, I mean, people would want to help build bridges. Like but, it's, Yeah, we currently live in a culture where it's like, you clean the sewers? Ew. You know what's a lot cooler? If you were born rich and did nothing of value. Then I'd respect you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> 
And that's the issue. It's like, this is lies. He's feeding you lies because he's perpetuating the idea that these are nasty, dirty jobs. He called them dirty jobs. Yes, exactly. These wouldn't be seen as dirty jobs. These would be seen as societal contributions. Yeah, it would be seen as like a necessary thing that has to get done and thank you for doing it. Yes. And also, you know, if we really wanted to, we could just put our intentions very much towards automating this kind of work. If it, if it's really so it's like no one wants to do it. To automate. Not impossible to automate. And as I've said many times before, I think there are people who would, there's enough people who would be down to do all the jobs that need to get done already. Like we already are dealing with so many humans on earth are in middlemen positions where they're contributing nothing to nothing and they know it and the companies know it. And it's just like, there's not, we're already at a point where there are not enough necessary jobs to go around for how many humans there are. Yeah. Also, he's, he, the other thing he's doing here that's misleading, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, Zoe, but like if, if what he's talking about is a, a centralized economy where you are assigned your jobs, that's communism, mm -hmm. not yeah. socialism. Yeah, but he doesn't know the difference. Right. I just wanted to make sure. Yeah, like that. So, so here he's presenting as like, if it's socialist, then you would be assigned your job. And that's not a requisite of socialism. He's thinking like, if you have any of you guys ever <clears> read <throat> The Giver? You know how, have you read The Giver? I still have, I have not read Okay, it. so in The Giver, it's this sort of like dystopian society where they've removed all emotion and color from the world. Like you can't see colors. Oh, um, right. I, yeah. I saw the movie. You can't see. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah. I saw the bad movie. All right. So and I kind of forgot it. it existed until just now. And <laughs> I was like, I'm oh, so right, the movie about with no this. colors. Disgusting. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the movie was ass. Okay, yeah, but yeah, anyway. Yeah. Um, <laughs> And uh, you're assigned your job. So essentially, right. like, you uh, you grow to be a certain age, and then the, like, prime minister or whatever, like, reads everyone their position. And it's mm -hmm. fit into what they're good at or, like, what they've expressed interest in. But they're assigned their place, and that is their place, period. Mm -hmm. And they take drugs to make them never want to have sex with each other unless they're... Uh, no, ever. They never want to have sex, ever. Mm -hmm. That's right. what the pills do. Mm -hmm. And then they have women that are specifically called birth mothers who just get pregnant and pop out babies all day. Mm -hmm. And I I genuinely think that that exact dystopian society described in The Giver is exactly what they think that Marxism is. Yes. And that's not the case. No. This, that's not socialism. Mm, that's right. dystopia. Like when we talk about, <laughs> yeah, when we talk about market socialism, that's a system where there would not be any assigned mm -hmm. jobs, where it would mm -hmm. still be people choosing their jobs. It's just that you wouldn't be coerced by the, th the threat of death by poverty. And people want to do stuff. Mm. Yes. Like, do you know how miserable everyone was when we weren't working? Yeah. We were going crazy. When we were locked down, you mean? Yeah, well, that's what I pandemic. mean. When we were, like, yeah. laid off from our jobs and, yeah. like, not working during the pandemic, people were going nuts. People were drinking <laughs> and doing drugs like nobody's fucking business and, because we didn't know yeah. what to do with ourselves. And there were some people like me who, who initially were like, this rocks. But <laughs> yeah. that's because I was, I had been, I just came off. You of were being, burnt out. Yeah, I was coming off of being exploited by Lyft for two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You were burnt. So I was exhausted <laughs> and angry, and then I was like, "Oh, cool! Yeah, I'll sit at home for a few months." Yeah, Fuck yeah. yeah. <laughs> but 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 in general, like, yeah. I just want to acknowledge that. But in no, general, most people, and even me, you know, like I've said before, like you know, I instead of doing this whole endeavor, I could have just farted around for another year. But yeah. I'd rather do something and yeah, a reaction contribute. a reaction to a burnout is very different than yes. a um, physiological need to contribute. Yeah, um, and and I think I've said many times before too that like if tomorrow suddenly the edict came down from whatever authority that like uh, uh, no one has to work anymore, yes, a lot of people would immediately want a vacation. Like definitely because of how exploited the labor has been in this country and this world for so long. Like, mm -hmm. yes, a bunch of people would be like, no more work. I'm staying home and jerking off and eating a submarine sandwich, you know. <laughs> submarine um, <laughs> but it's true. Uh, uh, but it's true. But. You give them a month or two. They start getting antsy, baby. They're gonna, yeah, they're going to want to do they're something. They're going to want to do people something. People want to do Contribute. something, and people love to feel like they're contributing. Yes. And that's the issue with so many jobs is it just you don't feel like you're contributing, or you feel like you're not being compensated it's, for it's what you're contributing. pointless, pointless busy labor for yeah. bullshit money. Yeah. Um, I want to just hear the rest and yes. see if he nails in a point, yes. and if he doesn't, we'll have more to say. Yes. <laughs> Marx never bothered with such messy details. He left that to others. Unfortunately, those others always turn out to be megalomaniacs, like Lenin, Stalin, Mao, Castro, Pol Pot, and Hugo Chavez. 
They were the ones who brought... None of them were Marxists, I don't believe. What he's saying is that Marxist wasn't specific enough, so um, everyone else filled in the blanks. But the thing is... Has he has has he read the Communist Manifesto? Probably it's, not. It's not that vague. Yeah. It's really not vague. Yeah, it's not that it's <laughs> not that he left a bunch of stuff vague and then these guys filled in the blanks with horror. It and wasn't a mad lib. Authoritarianism. Like, it's that these guys co-opted the language yes, of leftism. Yes. All, so common throughout history. Yes. Uh, uh, they co-opted the language of leftist populism and and leveraged it to to um, seize power and then became dictators yes. and treated everyone like shit. Brought Marx to life mm-hmm. and in the process caused tens of millions to suffer and die. Contrary to Marx's claim. It's funny, they're like tens of millions. Every year now, eight million people starve to death on Earth, even though we have enough food for everyone. And we live in a capitalist world. And capitalism is the system that uh, decides mm-hmm. how resources are distributed. Mm-hmm. 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 So capitalism is failing to distribute resources that already exist and are being produced consistently, failing to distribute those resources to the people who need them. Eight million people a year. For how long is this? I don't, I don't know how long that's been the number for a while so like for him to be like tens of and people do this all the time like so many times when i've spoken up for socialism or whatever like people post a like a meme of like you know the the graph of like how many people died under each quote unquote socialist regime and they just always leave out the people who die under capitalism Mm -hmm. because the capitalists people when millions of people die under capitalism it's like oh well you know that's collateral damage it's like necessary losses Mm -hmm. what can you do Mm -hmm. the world's not perfect but when millions die under socialism, well, it's proof that you can never do socialism. Yeah, uh, it's uh, <laughs> sus. It's sus and stupid. Mm-mm. Hi, Fest and Choi. What's up, Fest and Choi? <laughs> I like egg Play. whites. I like egg whites in my, uh, my uh, whiskey sours. Work mm, freely chosen brings both money and dignity. Furthermore, most people work best when they pursue their own self-interest. Work freely chosen, which it is not under capitalism. No. It's not freely chosen. You have to find something someone will pay you for. <laughs> and and if you don't, you'll be kicked out on the street until you're dead. Uh, yeah. Wait, what's he going to say about people enjoying their jobs? Yeah. I'm so Press. excited. An idea Marx despised. What? To him, self-interest turns everyone into <laughs> Ebenezer Scrooge. What? Greedy grasping and unfeeling not only is money that is capital inherently corrupting but the acquisition of it can't be done honestly or fairly and when we're speaking about corrupting like he's talking about like this this, this crazy notion but I'm, but the phrase absolute power corrupts absolutely has been like a cultural standard at least in the u.s since i was a small child no doubt <laughs> much earlier it's just it's again this weird thing it's it's like i've talked about before this dissonance of like how so many americans who are pro-capitalist will then turn around and and criticize someone as like, oh, he's just doing it for the money. Like, and it's like, how do you hold? What, what are you supposed to do it for? How do you hold both those ideas in your head of like, like it's crass for someone to do something just for the money, which I agree with, but then also capitalism is good. Like, well, yeah. Uh, also, uh, also, uh, like, uh, how many of you, <laughs> honest answer, how many of you have gone to a job mm. interview and mm. they're like, why do you want to work here? And you fucking lied. Yeah. You're like, I'm really passionate about pouring coffee for angry people. <laughs> like, no. Yeah, I'm really because passionate. Because I'm really passionate about eating meals and having a home. Right. That's what it is. I'm really passionate about selling khakis to accountants. <laughs> it's <laughs> like, my greatest dream. <laughs> yeah. Like, come on now. Like, come on. <laughs> the rich got rich by exploiting the worker. For Marx, yes. there's no other yes. possible explanation. For yeah, many there today, isn't. <laughs> there is no other possible explanation. Yeah, for these not. people, Marx offers a philosophical justification for their anger, even their rage. Yes. From generation mm-hmm. to generation, the formula never varies. Only by bringing the privilege down can the underprivileged be brought. This is a this is a leap. They're two completely separate thought processes. You have to processes. bring this, and this is funny because we encounter this a lot in liberals and conservatives in these discussions. Is this assumption that in order for uh, 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 you know impoverished, oppressed people to have a decent life, you have to like bring everyone else down, and that's just not true. Wrong. 
like like when we talk about market socialism, under, if, if if things were converted to a market socialist system like we describe, almost everyone would be richer. <laughs> like ninety nine percent of people, the only people who would lose a bit of money and power would be the people who have more than they know what to do with. It's, it wouldn't even affect their it quality affect of their life. Their quality of life at all, because I think there's this idea <clears throat> that if you started like with the very 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 rich class, I'm talking billionaires. Yeah. If you if you took some 1%. of their money and gave it back to the economy to society, whatever you want to call it. Yeah. Um. Uh, uh, there's this understanding that like they'll become impoverished. It's just insane. Insane. I'm like, no, they won't even fucking notice. Yeah, Their any, life will not change no. at all. Any of these guys, like the big <laughs> guy, like a Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk, a Bill Gates, you could take half of their money tomorrow. Half. Ha you could take more, but let's just say half. You could take half of their money tomorrow and their day-to-day -day life would not change at all. They'd still keep eating breakfast the same place. They keep getting their coffee. They keep uh, going to the you know the theater as much as they want. Or going off on their yacht. None of that would change. Like the 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 redistribution of wealth that we're talking about is about taking away hoarded money from people who could never even spend it. They have so much and spreading it out to people in need. There's something very mm -mm. fucked up about money for the sake of money. Money for the sake of a number, for the sake of social status. Yes. Because at that point, when money no longer has any value, mm -hmm. when it's simply used as a big PP -pee measuring tape, mm -hmm. it's like, it completely defeats the purpose of having money in the first place. So yes. then when the rest of society is reliant on having money in mm -hmm. order to survive, but then this billionaire class has money that not only do they not need, mm -hmm. but that they don't even know what the fuck to do with. Yes. That creates this very weird cultural dissonance. Mm -hmm. there are, we are living in two completely different realities. Yes. Money means something different to billionaires. Yes. Taking it away is like a, is like a, is like a hit to their ego mm -hmm. in a way that it wouldn't be to us. When mm -hmm. someone, like, if I get mugged, if someone steals my money, all I'm worried about, if I'm safe after the mugging, obviously, mm -hmm. all I'm worried about is, I don't know how I'm going to eat today. Yeah, I'm if someone a mugs bill. a billionaire, they're like, oh, I got an injury, and then they move on. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. So, it's just like, we're living in two completely different realities, mm -hmm. and you cannot expect, like, the same... Uh, uh, prescriptive uh, changes mm. to to for uh, the impoverished and the billionaire class. You can't you can't uh, what's the word? You can't argue for the same action. Yeah, and I think it also ties into how a lot of people seem to think that, especially liberals, seem to think that the word capital just means money. Right. And I think a like a more accurate definition is like. It's like money to burn. Mm -hmm. Like that is capital. If you just have some money, even if you have a couple million dollars, like in today's world and economy and the price of things, like a couple million dollars is actually not that much money. Um, you could certainly initially throw it around a bit, but cut to like five years later, if you're living in a major city, you know, it's 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 going to start, you're going to be like, oh shit, wait, I have to be careful now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the level of wealth we talk about of like who we want to have their wealth taken away and redistributed, it, it, it is it is fun money. It's monopoly money for them. It's not like how money is for the large majority of us. Yeah. Pippi! I brought a friend. Oh, Pippi's here for the video. Oh, oh, he's such a good dog. Good boy, Pippi. Pip, Pip got a teeth cleaning a yesterday. Woo! Big yawn from a stinker Do named Do you want to learn about Marxism, Stinky? Here we go, Stinky. Hot up. The venom that pours out of Marx's pen stems ultimately the from the venom. fact the that venom. reality <laughs> wouldn't conform to his... Is, the venom and, and like, that I, pours out of his pen. There's still like a lot of Marx I haven't read, but I've never... The, the, the stuff I have read <laughs> never reads to me as venomous. <laughs> Have you... No, no, all the ink blots on every book about Marxism is actually made from snake venom. You didn't know this? You didn't know that? I mean, in your studying of it, did you encounter that? Like... No, I would draw my finger against the page and lick it, and I never died. Yeah, okay. But no, I mean, but I don't truly, think yes, yes, yes. Like philosophically, was it venomous? No, no. I, everything I read from Marx seems very uh, like uh, clinical. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Don't you think? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Very like, academic. Like I said, it's it's academic. It's, yeah, it's, it's it's thought experimentation. It's not like a it's not like a screed. Oh anyway. shit! Look, proud boy leader um, Tario and four of his lieutenants were charged with seditious conspiracy. Good. Mm. 
We'll Good. talk about it. Go down, proud boys. It never seems to, to have occurred to him that people are complex beings with different talents, ambitions, and mm. desires. No, that's it wrong. It may be wrong. more accurate it. to say he didn't care. If people wouldn't conform to his worldview voluntarily, then the state would just have to use other methods of persuasion. That's not what he advocated for. No. For state, state this enforced. This guy is lying to you. Didn't he, didn't he argue for lying. that it had to be voluntarily embraced? Let's see. Um, did Marx... Seriously, Kralos and... I, I just, God. It would give me so much hope for the species and the world and the future and everything just to see Trump behind bars. To see Donald Trump in an orange jumpsuit in a prison cell would would make me think so I I like my respect for <laughs> society would skyrocket. <clears throat> hmm. This might not be the correct. Yeah. And the thing is like I I've, I've never sat down and really properly read Marx's stuff. Marx and Engels saw work as, essential, as central to human existence. This theme de is developed by Engels in his unfinished essay, The Part Played by Labor in the Transition from Ape to Man, where he maintains that labor is prime basic condition for all human existence, and this to such an extent that, in a sense, we have to say that labor created man himself. Mm. Typo. His speculation by Angles on the uh, Angles on the evolution of human being focuses on the idea that walking on two feet freed the use of the hand and made possible the development for complex tasks. Right. It's still kind of weird that we're bipedal. Like we oh, shouldn't yeah. be bipedal. It's fucking weird. It is weird. The specialization of the hand in turn led to labor, the mastery over nature, the differentiation of the human species. Labor brought people together under conditions quote where they had something to say to each other. This is actually I feel like a little philosophically off base. Hmm. Um, that labor rather than language is what brought us together. Mm, I don't know about that one. Mm. Um, it definitely is a huge factor, though. Uh, family and kinship relations set the pattern for the way different tasks were undertaken or assigned. There were various theories. Uh, da, 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 undermines the collectivity of production and appropriation, elevates the appropriation of products by individuals into the general rule, and thus ex creates exchange between individuals. Gradually, commodity production becomes the dominating form. The foundation of the division of labor. I'm I'm just curious as to his exact stance. The hierarchical structures accompanying the town country antithesis entail a second major division that works to perpetuate differences among people. Differences among people, i.e. the separation of mental and manual labor. The roots of this con contradiction and its psychological reinforcement go far back in time. Note, for example, how Socrates views manual work and the manual worker. And it, it's so funny, too. I'm just, like, tripping balls on how this guy in the video is seems to be presenting this, painting this portrait of capitalist society today as though, like, everyone... Like, he's like, Marx didn't consider that, like, people are... There's a variety of people, and we're all different, and we like to do different things. And, like, he shows, like, all these different people wearing different outfits to represent their different... Like, as though, like... Under this system, everyone just figures out what they like to do and then goes and does that. <laughs> yeah. As if, as it like, it's like the reality under capitalism is the large, large, large majority of people are doing a job they don't like. Yeah. Uh, because the, if they don't, they'll be killed with poverty. So it's just so obviously coercive. It, it, it just stymies me. They, it, so Marx does speak, Marx and Engels do speak to human desire here. Um, and the funny thing the, the, about the way things are currently set up is I think it's I think we have a lot of people who are working jobs that they don't like, like I said, but that also like if we could just have a system for people to find their way to the jobs they really like, um, I think there are enough people to do everything, like I've said many times. And, and you know, for example, like I when I did Lyft driving, I fucking hated it. You know, like, uh, like, like sometimes I'd meet someone who was fun or like, you know, I'd, I'd like learn something from a person visiting from another land. Like, I'm not going to say there were no positives because certainly there were little isolated bits, but overall I hated it as a job. And I've spoken to and, and, and heard about secondhand a number of people who love it, 
who love to be Lyft drivers and Uber drivers. I've heard about people who are working corporate jobs for six figures. And they're like, oh, but this is so fun. I get to meet people. And they're like, yeah, but I get to just drive around and I make my own hours and I love this. Like people who've left their high paying corporate jobs to be Uber drivers. Um, and so I think it's really, you know, a humane society would have a system in place to help people find the things they like to do and help, you know, employers or managers, whoever ever breaks down, find the people who are going to want to do those jobs that need to get done. Um, mm, okay. And the okay. thing is, it's better for the wealthy to have a system where most people are in jobs they don't like, like where we're all constantly competing or we're trying to like get the quote unquote good jobs. Whereas if you had a system that just helped people find their way to the jobs that, that made them happy, that they felt best suited for. Like there are people who would love to be a janitor. If you said all you have to do for the rest of your life is clean a couple bathrooms a day, like, you know, four days a week, you go clean some bathrooms and that's all you have to do. For your, and then, you know, you can go and participate in society freely. All your basic uh, human needs are decommodified and taken care of. Like there are plenty of people who would this, love to clean toilets. This is speaking to what you're talking about. Yeah. So you know how he's like, oh, people won't be able to do what they enjoy. <clears throat> They'll have yeah. dirty jobs only. Yeah. A frequent met objection to the communist vision is the claim that people will work only if driven by economic motive. Mm. Yet this notion is refuted by many of the primitive societies we know about where non-economic work and incent uh, incentives predominate social responsibility tradition desire for prestige mm -hmm. and pleasure in craftsmanship pleasure in yep. craftsmanship yeah given the record of past changes in people's attitudes to the community and to their work it is reasonable to assume that human nature will adapt and adapt with enthusiasm i love that adapt with enthusiasm to a social order based on cooperation elimination of rigid division of labor and the opportunity for a fuller development of the individual yeah. So he's speaking to, it's like, this is, and obviously this is an interpretation of Marxist theory, mm -hmm. but like, this seems correct. And it's just, it just. It's to, ever, to each according to his ability, to each according to his need. And it's, it's in theme with pro-capitalists because generally all pro-capitalists, when they criticize Marxism or socialism or communism or whichever they choose, uh, 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 they just describe capitalism. <laughs> Like he's doing it. He's like, oh, a system where people are coerced and into doing jobs they don't want to do. Like, what? You think yeah. that's not what's happening now? It's so goofy. Yeah, it's wild. Like murder and terror. Wait, what? Wait, yeah, go back a bit. What? And I was gonna say, yeah, Kralo Santh, totally. Retirees work just to keep busy. Um, uh, uh, housewives and house husbands who who you know their their uh, partner makes enough to take care of both of them they'll still go out and work also how many housewives have etsy shops come on now yeah or, or people sold, want to do uh, stuff or so what was that weird thing that people were selling tights on facebook what was oh, that shit i don't know they, there was just a documentary about it It was like a little a little cult of of <laughs> tight of sellers. legging of leggings worshipers yeah I'm forgetting the name now. Anyway, that's very funny. Yeah, it's hair down time, y'all. Okay, it's hair down time. We'll so get wait, about who, ten minutes of hair down. Time. So now we're gonna find who is he saying was the murderer? Yeah, I want to know what who's, happened. Who's gonna murder? How did who? we get here? If people wouldn't conform to his worldview voluntarily, then the state would just have to use other methods of persuasion, like murder and terror. Mm. It all made sense to the philosopher as he that, toiled away. In a Marx has nothing to do with that. Let me see. I want to keep looking these things up because I have I have studied Marxism, but I want to make sure yeah, I'm it's only always speaking great. to the correct facts. Always great. Did Marx threaten murder for <laughs> not working? <laughs> uh, or you could say, did Karl Marx advocate for advocate forced labor? How about that? Hmm. Did Marx advocate? For forced labor? Forced or, or, labor. Or, yeah, either way. Uh... And also, while we're looking this stuff up, it's, I think, also worth just pointing out that you look at the PragerU video and there's nothing. No sources. No sources. Never a cited, source. Nothing quoted. I don't this think I've ever seen. Been, does he have sources in his bio? He's been talking about Marx for five minutes. Oh, why does anyone still care about Marxism? Uh, Karl Marx has been- Shut up. We were here. We were by the murder part. Yeah. 
He's been talking about Karl Marx for five minutes, and he has not presented a single quote yeah. from Marx. No, because if he did, people would be like, wait That's like, that, like, you know, and I'm all for digging in and, like, finding the hard facts and being really specific, but that's kind of all you need to know, that this is bullshit. The uh, fact that I'm, like, mm -mm. I'm putting in, like, pretty easy-to-understand questions and nothing is coming yeah. up. No, I'm pretty sure from what I this know. Feels like a fake fact. From what I know of Marx, Marx never advocated forced labor because one of his major criticisms of capitalism it's is it's forced labor. labor. <laughs> you're coerced. It all made sense to the philosophers. You're coerced he with the, away uh, in the corner of the. You're coerced with the threat of economic consequences to be forced to do things. Um, you know, and it seems like he's just speaking to like, you know, like, uh, like Stalin shit and like gulags and how like, you know, there were people who pretended, uh, uh, in my view, pretended to be following the teachings of Marx or, or pretended to be socialists. Well, you know how a lot just, of those yeah, were those, authoritarians. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of those dictators <laughs> and authoritarians um, uh, rose to power because people like leftist theory. Yes. So they're like, hey, we're leftists, baby, we swear. Right. We're the socialists. Yeah. We'll help you out. And people are like, yay! Yeah. And then they kill everyone. The Nazis did it. Like, communism was getting... They sell people on leftism! Yeah. Communism was becoming very popular in the Weimar Republic. And then, uh, 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 you know, the Nazis co-opted that populist leftist language. And that's why they called themselves the National Socialist Party. And still dumbass right-wingers today. And liberals will say that, you know, like, like, oh, the Nazis were socialists just because no. they put the word in their name. Like, the how Nazis were fascists. Could you be, how could you be any more gullible than that? that we're going to do... The first people they executed were communists. Yes. We're going like, to do <laughs> a clown college on what do words mean for the next few weeks, mm -hmm. and we're going to talk about all of these things, and we're going to be able to differentiate them succinctly and clearly, because I'm so fucking tired of hearing the, like, well, you know, the Nazis were socialists. No. Mm -hmm. Let's try again. The and got, and got it, Crail of Xanth. Totally. Yeah. Exactly. They. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. We're, we're, we're all under threat of death by poverty, and yeah, even Constantly. more so. Uh, uh, capitalism has yeah is just so cruel to anyone who doesn't have the physical traits that capitalism has deemed valuable. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <clears throat> DM or in a squalid London apartment. What is astonishing is that millions came to believe him. What is tragic is that millions more suffered and died because they did. What is scary is that millions continue to believe. I'm Brad Thompson. Again, he's just professor. describing capitalism. <laughs> Wait, what is he a professor of? of political science at Clemson University for Prager University. All right, let's look this fucker up. I believe he's a professor of political science. I know science. he is, but I want to look him up. Where is, where is this guy's name? Uh, Bradley Thompson. <laughs> C. Bradley Thompson. Let's take a look at an his interesting track Krayla record. Sand. And there's another example, Let you know, see. that like you you still <laughs> yeah you want to work to have because it feels good to have something to do. It truly does. This article has multiple issues. I believe that there are you know some people who maybe just <laughs> would be so who are so not like maybe who are who just would just want to just sit in a puddle and fart for the rest of their lives mm -hmm. if you didn't force them to do anything and i don't care you know i'm i think it's like a small price for society to pay to have like a handful of people you know quote unquote not contributing if, if it means that overall everything is fair and equitable and humane um it's, it's weird to me how upset people get about like the mere idea of somebody else not working <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and that's another condition bullshit thing. Um, yeah. so so this says that there are issues with this article because the sources are like him, um, and it says uh, uh, he's uh, lectured around the United States on topics including etiquette, education reform, American history, Marxism, and natural law theory. Yeah, Great. he definitely wrote this whole Wikipedia himself. Um, no, I want to know who he is. I want a real one. This one? Yeah, let's see. Zoom in, uh, zoom in. 
Thompson is the BB&T Research Professor in the Department of Political Science at Clemson University and the Executive Director of the Clemson Institute for the Study of Capitalism. <laughs> Thompson has published six books, including his most recent, America's Revolutionary Mind, the award-winning John Adams and the Spirit of Liberty, <laughs> Neoconservatism, an obituary, obituary for an idea, huh. the revolutionary writings of John Adams, anti-slavery political writings, 1833 through 1860, and Freedom and School Choice in America and education this is a real mixed bag of books yeah uh, children's rights natural law theory marxism <laughs> progressive education and free market education he has lectured around the country on education reform and his co and his op-eds have uh, appeared in scores of newspapers in the united states and abroad his lectures on the political thought of john adams have twice appeared on c-span why is he so obsessed with john adams it's, it's also another another example to look at and good question zoe why is he so obsessed with john adams weird uh uh but how like rich kids mm -hmm. like people who are born into well trust fund kids who don't who have all the, they don't have to work for money they could just fart around forever most of them do stuff mm -hmm. most of them like they 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 you know the the, the nice ones i think uh, uh they start like um you know, they start charities and stuff. They mm -hmm. like start organizations to 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 you know contribute to something. You know, right? Uh, well, the rich people that aren't busy like <laughs> raping women, yeah. Well, right. Well, that, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, the nice mm -hmm. ones, mm -hmm. the nice ones start charities. You know, the shitty ones, like like many will just go get a job at their father's company, and mm -hmm. it's like yeah, and and you know, and many of those jobs they get at their father's company, they don't do much real work of any kind, but they're still doing a job. You know, it's like it's like if this were true. That people were just generally intrinsically like so lazy that if you don't threaten them with death by poverty, they won't do anything. Then every rich kid, every trust fund kid would would just be on permanent vacation. And they don't choose that. It blows my fucking <clears throat> mind that he's claiming that like Marxism promotes coercion for work. And then he does lectures on capitalism. Yeah. He'd have so much more of a point if he was speaking more specifically to communism. Yeah. Of that, like, it's one of my issues with, with a lot of, you know, communist theory is, is that it, I think, starts to, at times, dip into the same realm of capitalism of forcing people to work, you know? And I don't think anyone should be forced to work. Uh, 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 um, but, uh, no, but obviously, also, I don't want to say, like, that's all of communism because that right. would be reductive. Um, but, uh, but the fact that he's just referring to socialism and specifically Marxism makes his argument complete fucking nonsense. Yeah. <clears throat>